Hey guys, this is the Toolbox, and at the risk of sounding hyperbolic, this could be the last control surface you'll ever need for your Mac. Let's get into it. So let's start with the controller itself. It looks and feels like your standard game controller. It's, it's very solid. And what I really like about it, it's small. It takes up very little room in your desk, but it's not so small that your fingers can't easily find the keys. So let's talk about the controls. There are 14 independent uh, buttons that can be assigned to any command from any app you work with on your Mac. And each of them have multiple functions, but more on that when we get to the software. In order to work with the Toolbox Neo, you're gonna need to download the software and you'll find that in the download section of their website, and just click download for macOS. Now, before you begin working with the toolbox, you're gonna to wanna to set up your Final Cut Pro command set first. So go to the Final Cut menu, choose commands, and here I'm set up to use the default keyboard set. But I also have some other sets, and I'll come back to this color grading one a little bit later. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is locate the software and launch it. This is called the Toolbox Console. And it really consists of two areas, the preset list on the left and the preset settings on the right. Now out of the box, the toolbox has built in command sets for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, basically all the Adobe apps. But we're gonna make one for Final Cut Pro. So what we're gonna do is click this plus button. I'm gonna give it a name, Final Cut Pro, and click Create. Now over in the settings list, we can see all of the functions of the hardware listed here and no commands have currently been set for any of the buttons or knobs. What I wanna do is walk you through how to set up a few commands so that you know how to do it. Then later, I'm going to import a preset where I have all of the commands already populated. So I wanna start with the dial. If you look at the dial, you'll notice you can set it for counterclockwise rotation and clockwise rotation. So what I want to do is set the counterclockwise rotation first by clicking, by clicking on the left side of this bar. Now I want the playhead to shuttle 10 frames backward whenever I turn the dial counterclockwise. I happen to know the keyboard shortcut is shift left arrow. So the command is registered in the settings window just by typing it. Now I'm going to give it a name by clicking this pencil icon. So I'm going to type out shuttle back 10 frames and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to do this for the clockwise motion and again I'm going to type the commands. In this case I'm going to type shift right arrow. Click the pencil icon and I'm going to type shuttle forward 10 frames and click OK. So I have my first two commands assigned to the shuttle. Well, while I'm here, let's set the press mechanism of the dial. So I'll click there. And I want the press mechanism to play and pause. So that happens to be the space bar in Final Cut. So I'll press the space bar and I'll give it a name. Play slash pause. Click OK. Now let's jump into Final Cut to test these out. And I'm just using the dial now, so I'm going to go clockwise and the playhead moves 10 frames forward clockwise and the other way goes reverse. Now if I want to play at any point, I just tap once and it starts playing. Tap again, it stops playing because it's assigned to the space bar. And not so easy it is to sign commands to the tour box. Now, let's have some fun. I'm gonna go back to the tour box and I'm going to import a set that I created the other day, which has all of the commands that I use quite often in Final Cut Pro. To do that, I'm gonna click this little arrow. It says import presets. I'm gonna to navigate to where that preset is. By the way, this assumes I exported the preset, which you can do, which is nice. You can share them with friends and family. So I'm gonna choose FCP edit and click open. And it asks me to give it a name. I'm gonna call this Final Cut 
edit. So these are all the commands related to editing functionality with the toolbox. I'm going to click OK. And now if you look in the settings area, there's all of these commands now populated in here um, because I took the time to do that earlier. Now, if we go over here to the toolbox, I want to talk about how I have some of these set up. You saw how I set up the dial. I have the scroll wheel set up for moving the playhead in one frame increments. I have this knob set up for adjusting the volume of my clips. This one for selecting clips. This one for copying clips. This one for pasting. These set up for zooming in and out. And this one for cutting. And these buttons for selecting edit points. Let's take a look at how the zooming works. Right about there, maybe I want to zoom in. So I'm going to just tap this button. Zoom in. Tap this button. Zoom out. I have two keys set up for a fit to window. So you can actually assign two keys to do a command. So this one and this one does a zoom to fit. You'll notice I have a clip selected right now. I have a button set. Remember I said that these wheels can be set for a button. I have that set for a deselect command. Now let's look at trimming. So one of the commands I use all the time is trim start, trim end. I'm gonna just zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. And I'm gonna use my dial to, to move the playhead where I'd like to do a trim. So maybe I wanna do a trim, trim out right there at that playhead location. I wanna trim the end, so that would be this button I have assigned. So press that, I just trim the end. I'm just gonna to skim to the beginning. Maybe I wanna trim the head of the shot, so right there. I have this button set for trim start. I've trimmed the start. What's also nice is if I want to add a dissolve at this cut point, I have this button set up for dissolve. Just tap and adds a dissolve. Let's back the, back the playhead up, tap the dial, and we then see our dissolve. Nice. Now let's look at cutting and pasting clips. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to move to this clip over here. Maybe I want to select that clip. So I tap this button to make a selection. Now I want to cut that clip and I have that assigned to this button on the side. Cuts it. Maybe I want to move the play here. Maybe I want to paste it there. I have this button set for paste. Paste it. And let's say I want to paste as a connected clip instead of actually pasting it into the primary storyline, I have these two buttons set up for that. So pushing them both together, I get a paste as connected clip edit. What's also nice is I have my command set up to select edit points. So if I use this key with this key at the top, I can select an edit point. Now, if I want to trim that frame by frame, I have it set up so that if I hold down this button and use this scroll wheel, look at this, I can then trim the edit point frame by frame. Pretty nifty. And then I'll press this button to deselect. Then I'll move my playhead over the clip because I gotta show you this, this is great. Maybe the volume of this clip is a little bit too low. I have the volume set up for this knob, so I'm just going to twist this knob. Is that cool or what? All right, so those are just a few of the things I can do editorially, and obviously there's much more that I can do with this box because I've only assigned maybe a quarter of the commands to this thing. So really versatile. But what really makes it versatile is that you can change command sets. Like right now I'm using the toolbox for editing, but what if I wanted to use it for color grading? Well, let's look at how I set that up. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your command set and choose a set that's set up for that particular workflow. I can't stress this enough, it's best to have different command sets depending on the type of work you're doing in Final Cut Pro 10. So I have color grading set up for all of my color grading commands relative to the color board. Now I'm gonna go back to Toolbox, go back to the console, and I want to import a color grading set that I created. Select that, click Open, and I'll call this FCP Color, and click OK. 
All right, now that I have my color grading set loaded up in the toolbox, I'm going to walk through how I have these set up for color grading. Now, because the toolbox is primarily set up for grading, I have the navigation keys set a little bit differently. For example, this button now moves the playhead to each clip so I can color grade whatever clip the playhead is parked over. Of course, this button moves the playhead backwards. I wanna to move to this shot right here of my son. As you can see, the shot can use some color work. I'm gonna bring up the color board by tapping the side button. I also have these keys here mapped to the various boards. So for example, I wanna bring up the exposure pane, tap that button. The saturation pane, tap that button. And the color pane, that button. So I'm gonna go back to the exposure pane and I maybe wanna work and I want to work on the shadows and midtones. I have this button set up to toggle between the various controls. So if I go to that button, I want to bring down the shadows. And I have that mapped to this wheel right here. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. Press the button, go to the next control. Bring down the midtones. And the color's not looking right, so I want to jump into the color board and I want to work on the highlights. So I'm gonna tap this button, jump to the highlights, and I wanna add more red into that white sand area. Now to do that, I have this wheel mapped to the horizontal movement of the puck. So you can see this. So now I wanna move this into the red area, maybe the red part of the field there, and then use this wheel to push some more red into the sand there. And then, Maybe I want to bring the saturation up, so I'm going to bring, I'm going to press this button and go to the master control for saturation and then use the dial. You can see I can really dial up the saturation. We'll bring it down. And if I want to see a before and after, I have this little button here mapped to that. So if I tap that. So what do you guys think of this? Leave your comments below and thanks for watching.